So that's yeah. why I have a trust yeah. that is the general member of the LLC. The LLC is the beneficiary of the land trust, and there's a total disconnect between the house land trust ownership and the actual ownership. There's no bridge that gives information of who this person is over here from this side. Okay? They can find it from this side, like my ex-wife kept pounding on the table, he's hiding money, he's hiding money, <laughs> right, in court. I know he owns something somewhere. They couldn't go from this side to find it. Okay? Because? Because it's all owned in a land trust. Pick out a piece of property somewhere in the United States and prove that it's mine from some arbitrary name and number. It's owned by the LLC. No, it's owned by the land trust and some trustee. And some trustee. And so you have you have an independent trustee. That's not you. So the beneficiary is over here in my desk drawer. Yeah. Nobody knows who that is. So you're not the trustee. No, I'm never the trustee. So you hire a trustee then? Yes. And you can hire yeah. trustee yeah. services everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I have an out of state <coughs> LLC and they're telling me I need to have uh, Utah. Okay. Because I have a I have a, a property there. Okay. So, so does that mean I? Uh, so I I have an LLC owned by a, a property owned by an LLC, which is not the way to do it. I understand. But now that I have that LLC, can I put everything else in a land trust and just continue to use that L out of state LLC? Or is California going to come back and say no? You have to have an L of California. LLC? <coughs> do, you, do you know? I don't get into California franchise tax boards discussions <laughs> because they make up rules as they go. Okay, um, but the best strategy for your property in Utah, any of the money that you bring from Utah into, into California, you're gonna have to pay tax on it. There's no dodging that whatsoever. Structure-wise, I would own the pro I would transfer the property from the LLC to a land trust. Name a trustee, okay? You're gonna use a Virginia land trust, and you're gonna have uh, your trustee somewhere outside the state. Okay, and there's a whole explanation of that. Why but, Virginia? Why Virginia? Uh, Virginia has the best uh, um, legal precedents that favor you. So you want the trustee in a state where the, it's not Virginia, it's not California, it's not Utah? Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Just one, one more long, lengthy step of the lawsuit. So let's say somebody falls on your property. Okay, they're going to sue you. They now have to go to Virginia to file, okay, or they have to file according to the laws of Virginia. They can file in Utah, but they have to follow the laws of, of Virginia. So the long story short is, is they're going to have to serve the trustee. Where's the trustee? Florida. Okay, so they serve the trustee in Florida. He resigns <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I get notification that he's resigned. I appoint somebody else the trustee in another Nebraska. state. In Nebraska. And yeah, I never thought of that. But. And then you fire him. And well, he's going to get served. If they find him, man, oh, wow, they're, they're, they're really hungry. Because it's going to cost them about twenty dollars to $30,000 to find that person. So when the guy's sitting there, anybody attorneys? Wait. I, I just wanted to say that, that the state of California, don't they uh, treat a foreign LLC as a foreign corporation, and then you have to pay... Corporation. Correct. Correct. But in, in his circumstance, yeah. the property is owned in Utah okay. by a Utah LLC. So it has nothing to do with California. Not California, but maybe Utah. Would they treat it as a foreign corporation too? No, because it's a Utah corporation. But his name is all over it. I mean, I can find somebody. It, it, I can sue you easily in your LLC because everything is listed. The officers are listed. Everything is listed. Service is listed. It's so easy. I can go right to your office or wherever the service agent. address agent is, serve you, and bam, we're going to court, right? But if it's owned in a, in a land <coughs> trust, a Virginia land trust, they're gonna have to go to Virginia to find out who this person is because it just says a Virginia land trust and a trustee. But, but wouldn't an attorney normally look for money? Right? Here's what an attorney is gonna do. George walks in, he says, hey, I, I, I'm, a, uh, <laughs> I'm her. Right, and I, I got hurt on his property. And they're gonna say, well, yeah, you sure look hurt. Uh, let's see, uh, they, uh, let's, let's decide what's going on with your case. So they're gonna then search his LLC. Okay, boom, they're gonna see it's an LLC. 
<laughs> that attorney is going to file an action against that LLC immediately. But you know, being you know such a well-known person, you probably have a lot of people that you owe money to. They have they may have links at your LLC, uh, corporations like Duncan or whomever. So they're going to see you. You have not. You don't have a whole lot of money. Well, well uh, no, the attorney doesn't care. He's going to file the action because it's easy. And to file the action is in, in California is five hundred bucks. I can I can go file a lawsuit against you for five hundred bucks. Here's the point: you now need to defend it. It's going to cost you twenty grand. Okay, it's going to cost you twenty insurance grand. insurance for that? Could you buy insurance? Umbrella insurance or something like that? Yeah, but you know, it's it's just easier to disappear. So, with his situation, the attorney's going to sue his LLC. Because it's just call them into court and, and discovery the crap out of them. Do you guys know what that is? They ask you, what side of the bed do you get up? You know, a thousand uh, uh, questions on the interrogatories. And they blame you for everything. Well, with my scenario, they're going to see the land trust. They're going to see that it goes to Virginia. And then the trustee, they got to look up. It just says his name. So they're looking in Virginia for this trustee that's in Florida. If they get that far, they're going to contact them, serve them, for the lawsuit, and what's he going to do? Resign. He's going to resign. It's not up to the land trust to respond. Okay, if you can't serve me, how can I respond? I never received notice of service. But wouldn't the judge, you know, kind of look at whoever is managing who? the trustees? Who? Who? I mean, they may look at whoever. Is Wait a minute. Managing. They can't. It's in my drawer, in my desk. In California. I mean, find that maliciously you're firing and hiring trustees. They know? can't no? come to me. There's no connection to me whatsoever. Do you guys get that? Yeah. yeah. They have to know what's inside this drawer in order to link me to it. And the more work and research or watch he does this video. to try to hunt it down, <laughs> the more work that attorney has to do to hunt somebody down, the higher this guy who's suing whose fee is going up yeah. all Now, wait a minute. All that's done on contingencies. The lawyer will take the case and I get 40% of whatever we get against you. So I'm going to look this up. I'm going to hire a private investigator. I'm going to, I'm going to tell George to go home and I'll let you know in a couple days how, how your case is coming along. And then what he's going to do is he's going to hire a private investigator and they're going to run into this roadmap. And they're going to say it's, it's going to take forever to find out who the owner is. And as it stands right now, there's no assets except for the house and it's mortgaged. It's leaned. Okay. So there's no assets there. I can't even force them to sell that house because it's, it's mortgaged at 100%. So here's what the attorney's gonna do. He's gonna call George and say, George, you need to come in the office. George comes in the office and says, you know, we've done a lot of research on this and it just doesn't appear that you have a good enough case. And unfortunately, I can't take it for you. But if you wanna give me a $35,000 retainer, then we can move forward from there. Then he'll, because that attorney's gotta take his money out of his pocket to fund that case. That's why they get 40% of it. And if you think it's 33%, you've never dealt with an attorney. You know? How do you find attorneys to be a trustee? It's very simple. As Buy as Randy Hughes' product. <laughs> Seriously. Because he gives you a list of every state, every every uh, uh, trustee service, and, and Randy Hughes. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Mr. Land Trust, I think it's uh, uh, real estate. Yeah, just look up Mr. Land Trust, Randy Hughes. Google Randy Hughes Land Trust, yeah. you'll find it. Randy Hughes Land Trust, Mr. Land Trust. Some of those trustees disappear. We told, um, you know, uh, Bill Cadden's uh, right. standing, standing never returned our goals. He's an independent uh, trustee. We were trying to hire him. Yeah. Never, ever well, he's too so expensive goal. anyway. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. How much does it cost to get a player? For the Land Trust? Yeah, for the trustee. Oh. Yeah, it's 525. If you mention my name, he'll give you the uh, Land Trust University, which is like $800. He'll give that to you for free. If we mention your name? Yeah. You guys are that good. Yeah, I got, I, got, I got him on Skype. I got him on Skype. I got him on Speedo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I keep, keep looking, I got a, I got a bird. I see now. I got, I got a bird over right there. And, yeah. Um, the guy's awesome. I mean, he's one of the coolest. I, I just met with him. He was just here. I was I was up at Studio City, and uh, he's he just lost his wife, forty one years of marriage. Yeah. 
And I said, how'd you do that? Uh, no. You went through a shopping mall. <laughs> really? How'd you do that? You went through a shopping mall. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, she passed away in 41 years. So I'm worried about them. I, I stay in contact with them a lot because uh, I do a lot of RCFEs and people, when they lose their spouse at that long, usually last uh, eight months. Well, that's why we got to make uh, you know, a little bit of money so we can enjoy life because we're all going to die. We are going to die, and you can't take it with you. Unless you become a zombie. Yeah. But then you won't be able to enjoy it. All right, so isn't this exciting? So let's, let's not lose focus, everybody up here. The purpose of doing the land trust is giving me the ability to wholesale it without anybody knowing anything, Okay, without the realtors in the deals. Can I ask you one question? Yes, a latecomer. <coughs> yes. Let's just have a quick review on the on the terms of the Honey Badger contract. Let's just I want you guys to make sure you understand number one how you're making the offer because we're going to be actually you know practicing this on Sunday. But I want you to understand the terms so that what you put the land trust in has those <coughs> terms, right? So okay, I'm going to go over this real quick. So who else knew and didn't see this? I don't, did you see it? You guys didn't see it. Yeah. Let's just go over it to make sure. Okay, this is the honey badger method. Um, let me see if I can go back one. Oh. <coughs> let me, there we go. So, there we go. Okay, I thought I was going to leave, leave, run it out. Anyways, <coughs> this is how I do my offers. Okay, everybody puts in you know, no contingency, blah, blah, blah. It's very similar to this. The difference is, is I make my contract is not assignable because that way it looks, different. I'm going to, I'm going to close. Do you spell it out? Yes, I write that in the comment section. Um, so you, can, you, you can use the standard California contract, yep. but you're spelling this out. Yeah. It's supposed to make him feel comfortable that you're not gonna, that you're gonna close. Correct. Correct, right, because if I make it in the name of my land trust, that's kind of making them freak out because that's what I do. And, and they're like, well, who's this? what's this land trust? I need to see a copy of it. Once I get through that, if I start putting squirrely things in my offer, they're going to be like, no, no, no. no. You know, so you put your name? Huh? No. No. It's, it's in the name of the ABC123 yeah, like right? land trust. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, so and then, then we follow up with the structure in the comment section. Yeah. So I, I add this to the comment section that this contract is not assignable. And they'll say, wait a minute, there's a checkbox for that. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I want you to write it in there because I want them to read it. Because nobody reads a boilerplate. And in fact, I didn't one time and I lost a really good deal because I what do they call that? Compla complacent? Yeah, complacent. And, and I didn't read the new stupid line in there that had the new stupid law that All about it. lost me the stupid like, what? deal. What? Where did this come from? <laughs> yeah, and I was a personal resident and I lost it. I wanted it. So was that no contingency? So I had to kill the guy. No contingency is 50%. What, what does that mean? That means that I'm going to pay cash for it and there's no no strings attached to the cash. You're going to give him like cash? I've got it right deal. here. Right, It's right here. For half of what it's worth? Is yeah, 50%. Okay. So what it's a $100,000 house. It's a low house. bowl offer. It's a $100,000 house, but I'm offering $50,000. Okay. With that embarrassment to offer. See? Do you know the embarrassment? I'm embarrassed. Why? I'm a honey badger. I don't give a okay. shit. Don't hit me with anything. <laughs> yes, exactly. So my due diligence is 48 hours. My closing is in five days. I'm closing in five days. Okay. Um, and my earnest money deposit is fifty thousand dollars. The full offer amount. See, now, now it's not such a low ball offer anymore. And so you put fifty thousand in escrow right away, like that? No, oh. according to the contract. <laughs> according to the contract, but wait. Okay. Now, earnest money deposit will be delivered three days after the effective date for the full amount of the contract price, fifty thousand bucks. When do I need to deliver it? Three days after acceptance. acceptance. Do, no. you, do you spell out full contract offer or do you put the number in there? You want to put that in there exactly the way it's written. Exactly. Okay. And the reason is, is the earnest money deposit will be delivered three days after the effective date. What's When is a contract in effect? Signed. Both signed, signed copies. Okay. And then we add an addendum to it. Remember, I, you haven't seen it yet. Um, so anyways, that's how I make my initial offer. 
They're going to counter me saying, what the hell is all, you know, we, we like all this, but what the hell is this? Right? Because they're going to hit you. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? No, I'm not. Counter me. Because they like this. They're like, oh, wait, wait, the guy's got cash. He can close in five days, and we get our commission, and I can pay my Beamer payment. Right? Any you realtors? You don't, you don't tell them. You don't tell them you uh, no, no, no. Them. Right. So uh, they're not going to take that because they're going to reject it, and they're going to counter offer me. As soon as they counter offer me, <clears throat> that offer is null and void, correct? That's when I come back. And I change it to an all cash offer, no contingencies. I'll take that 50% and I'll go up. Maybe it's, let's say I go to 65%. So now I'm offering $65,000 for that $100,000 house because I can make it work in that. Let's say that's my numbers. Okay. And I can change the terms. Exactly. Oh, it's still as is, where is. This contract is assignable. So remember I wrote it in, is not. Now I cross out the not and I initial it. Why do I initial it? Because I want them to be sure that they look at it. Oh, wait, wait, why, whoa, why is it now assignable? What's this guy doing? I mean, what is the thing? I mean, you're still going to buy it, so it doesn't matter. You know. Well, my due diligence changes from 48 hours to 15 days or 17 days. And I'm going to close 30 days, not five days. And my earnest money deposit will be delivered three days after the effective date, and it's now $1,000. I took that $50,000 away. Take the baby's candy away, so right? What if they think